once saved, always saved, is a dangerous heresy. Now, the question goes like this. Once a person is saved, is there anything that can change that? Can you go from being saved to unsaved? This is a common statement used to attack Catholicism all of the time. But the fact is, lots of non-Catholic Christians also reject this idea. The Orthodox and even many different types of Protestants object to the idea that once a person is saved, there's nothing that can be done to keep them from staying saved. I've talked about this at length before in a pretty in-depth episode of my podcast, Catholic Feedback, which you can check out if you want to see it. But I've had a few conversations recently with people who come at this issue from a perspective I want to address, and it has to do with an assumption made about our salvation that is treated like some kind of trump card for anyone who disagrees with it. And here's what it is. Salvation is a free gift that you didn't do anything to earn. Therefore, you can't do anything to lose it. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a free gift. Now, that's the big statement right there that's supposed to destroy 2,000 years of Christian teaching about how you can actually lose your salvation. But let's talk about this. Is it really true? The problem with this kind of statement is that, first of all, it's just way too vague because that can mean different things to different people. I mean, how many of us have ever been given a gift that we didn't receive? How many times has someone tried to give you something and you said, no, I don't want to receive that? Just because someone offers you a gift doesn't mean that you have to receive it. There's a cooperation and a, and, and a level of partnership involved when a giver of a gift and a receiver of a gift come together. So for someone to say that the idea that it's a free gift means that there's no participation involved with receiving that gift is just dumb. It doesn't work, especially with something like salvation. Furthermore, when you talk about a free gift that you've received, does that mean that you keep it forever? Not at all. How many times have you received a gift and then you had it for a while and then you lost it or you got rid of it or you donated it or whatever? Just because you received something as a free gift doesn't mean that you always keep it. So when people try to apply this analogy as some sort of blanket statement over the top of salvation, as though this means once saved, always saved, it just falls apart. But the problem is people don't care. They just get stuck in this agenda that they have and everything you say, every other scripture verse that comes against it, everything the church fathers say about it, they just do full stop because in their mind, this, this idea of a free gift is all they care about. Now, why do people do that? Well, quite simply, they do that because they have an agenda. They want to believe that salvation is a free gift, and therefore, that means they don't have to do anything, and that means that they never can lose it, because what does that lead to? It means that you don't ever have to worry anymore about anything with regard to your own personal holiness or your own sinfulness. No matter what you do, no matter whatever happens, you can always rest assured that you know your salvation is safe. And again, that's a nice fantasy, but it's just not what the scripture teaches and it's not what the church fathers taught. Now, for some people, they don't care. They have their idea. They have their couple of verses that they've cherry picked out and come up with this, with this idea and they're never going to depart from that, which I guess is up to them. But I think it's dangerous and they need to be careful because you can't place God under some arbitrary rule based on a concept of what a free gift means that you've created for yourself and expect that everything else has to come underneath that. It's just an exaltation of one's own agenda and pride and it's a refutation of what God has said, what the church teaches and what's actually true. But for those who wanna argue Let's look at a couple verses that, in my opinion, make this position completely untenable. And the first one is from John chapter 3, verse 36. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever disobeys the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him. Did you notice the, that both things, you could say faith and works, are a part of this, this equation that we must have in order to be saved? Right? He says that you've got to believe and you can't disobey. And he doesn't say that, well, if you disobey God, you just won't receive as many rewards in heaven or you just won't have a certain kind of fellowship with God. 
He says you will not see life if you disobey the son. You see, part of the tactics that people use when they're putting forth these ideas is they try to take away the meaning of what this is all about and say things like, well, any verse in the Bible that talks about things that you're supposed to do, that's not really about salvation. That's about fellowship. That's about rewards. But that's not what Jesus said at all. And for someone to make that claim is just flat out dishonesty or completely delusional. The second text I want to point to comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 2. And Paul writes these words. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. Now, clearly he's talking to people who actually believed. He's talking to people who received the gift. So you can't make the case, well, he's not talking about people who actually were Christians, but just thought they were, pretended to be. No, he's saying that you received and that you believed unless you believed in vain. Now, how can you believe in vain with regard to your salvation if belief's all you need, right? That should be the end right there. But he says, look, you can have this. You received in which you will be saved and are being saved. Notice there, he talks about it as being a process. But the big fat word there is if you hold fast to the word I preach to you. If you do what God's will is, if you obey the commands, then you will be saved. Otherwise, your belief gets you nowhere. Boom. All right, let's look at one more. And again, I could come up with tons, which look at the Catholic feedback video for a more in-depth conversation about this. Second Peter chapter two, verses 20 through 22. For if after they have escaped the defilements of the world through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome, the last state has become worse for them than the first. For it would have been better for them never to have known the way of righteousness than after having known it to turn back from the holy commandment delivered to them. What the true proverb says has happened to them. The dog returns to its own vomit and the sow, after washing herself, returns to wallow in the mire. Again, this destroys this position that you can never lose your salvation because these people in, that Peter's talking to here, they clearly have escaped the defilements of the world through the knowledge of our Lord. See, what people want to say is, well, they never really were safe. No, it clearly says that they were, but it also says that if they depart from it, then they're worse off now than they would if they'd never heard the truth. How can they be worse off if they've received something that can never be taken away from them. How can they be worse off? Oh, well, they don't get as many crowns in heaven. No, it says they're worse off than, than if they never even heard about Jesus. What does that mean? I'll tell you what it means. That once we are set free from sin and, and we know the truth about Christ and we've responded to it and we've become partakers in the divine nature of God, we, we have entered into life if we disregard all of that and fall away from the holy commands, if we turn back to our sin, if we turn back to unbelief and faithlessness, friends, something bad can happen to us. We're, we're going to be in a worse spot than we ever were even before. That doesn't sound to me a whole lot like once saved, always saved, my friends. All right, let's talk about a couple church fathers. Now, for some people, I'll just be real with you. They don't care. They're going to be like, well, it doesn't matter what that guy says, you know, the salvation's a free gift. And it's like just this endless loop of repeating the same ridiculous trope over and over again. But it should matter what the earliest Christians believed because they were closest to the teaching of the apostles. It's, it's highly unlikely that something so foundational as your salvation that these guys are going to get so completely wrong when it comes to this issue. Justin Martyr, writing around 160 AD, says this, I hold further that those of you who have confessed and known this man to be Christ, yet who have gone back for some reason into the legal dispensation, i.e. the Mosaic law, and have denied that this man is Christ and have not repented before death, you will by no means be saved. So those of you who know Jesus, but you've gone back to the old law or you've gone back to some kind of false religion that you were in before, if you don't repent before you die, you're not saved. All right, one more from Tertullian from 213 AD. He says this, God had foreseen that faith even after baptism would be endangered. He saw that most persons after obtaining salvation would be lost again by soiling the wedding dress, by failing to provide oil for their torches. 
So again, he's talking about using an, an allusion to these uh, parables that Jesus talked about. What happens if once you were in the faith, but then you fell away? And he's warning that that can happen. And God understands that. That's why God gives us the sacrament of reconciliation so that when we do fall away, we have a way to get back, my friends. See, that's so important for us to understand that just because you can lose your salvation doesn't mean that it's lost forever. God has made a way back. People say things like, well, if you can lose your salvation, then how can you ever know that you're going to heaven? Well, that's why it's so important to stay in a state of grace to do what you can to, to grow in your holiness. And when you have stumbled away, to get your soul right with God, to repent and believe the gospel all over again, to turn from your sin and be reconciled to God. That's why God gave us this amazing gift in John chapter 20, when he told the disciples, whoever sins you forgive are forgiven them. Friends, that's the gift that we've been given. That's the way out. That's the way back. But you see, here's the problem. When, when we claim that Salvation is this free gift that we didn't do anything to receive and therefore we can't do anything to lose. Then the fact is this, we might be headed for hell and not even realize it because somebody somewhere told us some analogy about a free gift that we just think, well, doesn't matter anyway. God's got me. And the fact is God has warned you to obey his commands, to abide in him. So friends, don't believe this lie of once saved, always saved. Don't believe it because it can take your soul away from God. Instead, seek to have faith in Jesus and obedience to what he's commanded you, just like he said to do. Thanks so much for watching this video, my friends. Take care and God bless.